Hi. Uh, my kid's in here today. I try to avoid this, but um, it's not always avoidable. It's probably going to be a whole thing. I don't want to hurt her feelings, but, you know, I love you. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this will, this will have to be kind of fast. Um, no. So, no, do not talk to me again while I'm doing this, unless you are on fire. Okay. This is an important one, too, and that's why I'm super, like, okay. Can you fast while lifting heavy is the question. And if you go on any website about lifting where all the bros hang out, you know, it's different on the, it, it's different when you look at the women focused sites because they are, I think women are just kind of like, they're better at losing weight because they're always dieting because everyone wants them to be skinny, but, and it's harder for them to be skinny, but especially, you know, the sites where it's a bunch of guys like conversing with each other and the forums and whatever. Uh, when I search this, I always find like a Reddit thread or you know, a thread on the starting strength forum, which I'm not a member of, but I just like look at some of the stuff, the nutrition stuff. And, um, it's a lot of bros being like, no, you can't fast or whatever. And so like the answer is not simple. Some people can't and some people can't. It depends on a lot of different factors. For example, are you fat? Because hang on. I forgot to put on do not disturb and people are messaging me. Um, are you fat? Because if you, you need to cover up, honey. Oh my God. If you are overweight, like significantly overweight, then it's going to be not a big deal for you to be in a little bit of a deficit while you are lifting and getting muscle. And you'll probably still be able to gain muscle. So like you can totally do both things at the same time. It's just that you're not going to be able to do either one as well as if you focused entirely on one and you also can't be super aggressive. So I was looking at my training logs from back in 2020 when I was um, first doing starting strength and I was doing 72s and I had just gotten under 200 pounds down from like 280. And I was, you know, lifting by myself in a shed. And, uh, and I noticed as I looked at my lifting logs that my weights were going down and I didn't know enough about the program to know like how bad that was. And, uh, and that, like, that's not the way it was supposed to work. I was just like, oh, well, this is the best I can do today. There's no air conditioning out here. It's Texas. It's summer. And I'm fasting. So, like, I at one point deadlifted 115. And then a couple months later, I'm still going back, like, twice a week. But a couple months later, I, I was deadlifting 85. Well, that's not the way the novice linear progression works. You don't back off like that. You keep adding weight to the bar. And if you can't lift it, it's because you're not doing the program. You're not using correct form. You're not training often enough, or particularly probably in my case, you are, you are, you don't have the fuel, you don't have the gas. So like, just because you're really overweight, I keep having a glass. The reason I take my glasses off is because of the reflection. Um, so, uh, So yeah, the, my problem was probably that I was trying to lift on 72 hour fast. Okay. So, um, even if you're pretty fat, you might not be able to do that. Um, now we know enough about bioenergetics. You don't need a PhD in it to know that you don't have to have just eaten sugar or carbs in order to have carbohydrate available to burn in a workout. That's not how it works. You store that, right? You store glycogen in your muscles and your liver. You can also use fat, triglyceride, a substrate. 
um, it's just harder to get to. Um, protein we don't use for fuel unless we're in big trouble, kind of. It's a structural, uh, it's a structural building block is what we make muscle and connective tissue with, right? So we know that this channel, if we hang out here a lot. Um, so we know that just because I didn't just eat goo gel, um, that doesn't mean that I don't have access to any carbohydrate. By the time you're doing that, it's like the cyclists, you know, who are on mile 200 of their whatever, then they need that quick acting glucose because they're, you know, doing that long, slow endurance, endurance exercise. And they're just about completely out of glycogen. And I, I don't know if you've ever seen somebody like at the end of a marathon, just complete, like you should look it up on YouTube. It's, it's actually hard to watch, even if you're not a huge fan of marathon runners. Um, the, uh, the ones who run out of, like, they just have completely depleted all the glycogen in their body. Um, at, and they could be like at within sight of the finish line and they've been running for hours and they literally just kind of fall apart. Their, their body's just like, Nope, they can't keep going. It's so weird to watch. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I'm not going to run into that problem, you know, lifting for three sets of five, but, uh, if you, if you have 35% body fat, can you do something like alternate day fasting? Yeah, that's what I'm trying right now. Um, not saying I have 35% body fat. I'm just saying that, uh, I'm going to give it a try. And my main reason for doing this is because, okay, look, if you want to lose weight, you need to be in a, in an energy deficit. And that's not as simple as it's made out to be eat less, move more. It's a little bit more complicated than that because it's so difficult, really probably impossible to accurately calculate your total daily energy expenditure. We just don't really have a way to measure that. So we have to guess. So you are kind of guessing at your total daily energy expenditure. And you are also kind of guessing at what the energy value is of the food you're eating because we don't have a bomb calorimeter. We don't actually know. I mean, there's actually a scandal some years back. I don't know if you remember, but there's this non-dairy ice cream. Mom. What? So. No, I'm doing this. Is it an emergency? <laughs> oh my God. Come here, baby. Come here. It's okay. Come here. Come sit with me. Um, there's this non-dairy ice cream made out of fava beans called Arctic Zero. Come look, come look at this, babe. I want to show you something. This is cool. Um, and they got into some trouble because some tests were run and it turned out that they were, they were putting the calories on the package, but the actual calories was like 68% more than it said it was, which is, and, and something, it's just a big problem. Like you don't really know how much. And for one, one of the problems is that most people don't weigh their food um, or they, they try to measure it, but they don't use the correct method. Come here, please, baby. Come on. Come here, mommy. Um, so, I'm going to keep going because this is important, but sorry about that. Uh, it happens. Um, so it's difficult to know exactly how much you are expending and how much you're taking in. It's really kind of impossible to get that exactly right. So what you have to do is you have to use just scale feedback, measurement feedback and tweak it because you know, you, that's the only way to do it really. It's just over time to slowly figure it out. Honey, come here, please. You gotta stop. I'm in the middle of this. Come on, come up here with me. Come with me. Come on. There you go. Okay. Okay. There we go. All righty. There we go. Okay. So mom life. I love you. So um, if you 
are fat and you know that you're fat, then you can feel pretty comfortable that you'll be able to lose some fat and gain some muscle at the same time. As long as you don't go too buck wild with your deficit and put yourself in danger of failing on your lifts and not progressing or slowing down your metabolism and doing yourself no favors in the long run when it comes to losing or maintaining weight. You have to understand though, that like Thomas Sowell said, there are no solutions, only trade-offs. If you want to lose fat while you gain muscle, you have to be aware that you're not going to gain as much muscle as you would have, which means that your strength might not go up like it would. All of this is predicated on the assumption that you are a novice, that you're a beginner. Because if you're already intermediate as a lifter, it's going to be way, it's just way harder. It's way harder to gain muscle. Um, so if you're new to lifting and you're quite overweight, overweight, what you need to do is put yourself in a kind of mild to moderate deficit. What this looks like, I, I wouldn't say probably over 15%. And the reason that I'm trying it this way with alternate day fasting is because I'm so freaking tired of counting and tracking macros every day. I would rather just fast on my rest days and eat maintenance on, or maybe a little above maintenance on my, um, on my training days. And then, yes, baby. I'm almost done. Yes, I'm almost done. And then have one day a week where, where I eat in, in, you know, quite a bit of maybe like a 500 calorie surplus because it's good to have one day a week where you have pizza, you know, it's just good. And then what you've got is you've got, or what I'll have is about a 3,500, 4,000 calorie week deficit without having to actually obsessively count and track macros every single day. I only have to do it for four days. And I've started meal prepping so that I can decide the day before what I'm going to eat and have it ready and not have to scramble on the day and end up eating like three protein bars and it's really not good for you. Um, I'm almost done. So the answer is yes, you can lift and fast and still gain muscle if you're new to lifting and you're already fat. If you're obese, you, it, it depends. Are you so obese that you can't squat your own body weight? In that case, fast longer. I have many videos on it and then get to the point where you can lift. If you are mildly obese, then you can do, you know, basically what I'm doing, except you might be able to fast a little bit longer. Um, I love you. I love you too. If you're in a situation where you're already 15% body fat, like, what are you doing here? You're not my people. I mean, God bless you, but I don't, I don't know what to do with you. If you're like one of those people trying to get to single digits so that you can like shred cheese on your abs, this is not your place. <laughs> I, so, uh, I, I help fat people generally. And look, if you started out fat, and I know it may be hard to shift your thinking. I have a client right now that I'm like, you don't really need to lose weight. <laughs> you just need to gain muscle. Like That's it. That's the only thing. That can be the hardest part is just having somebody give you permission, you know, to, um, to, to just gain muscle and not try to be on a diet. And here's the thing. If you are, if you're just starting out with tracking anything, then it's probably a good idea just to do nothing but track for a while because you might have no idea how much you're actually eating. Um, as a matter of fact, when people hire me, that's why I, I try to get them to, to pay me for three months in advance, not just because I want them to be my client for three months, but because, well, first of all, obviously if you pay for three months, you're going to, we're more likely to stick to it for three months, but also because 
that gives me a whole month to like not change very much, but just get to watch, like just get to see what you are doing, especially with women because weight and eating patterns change so much with hormones, you know, with your cycle. Um, but if someone only hires me for a month then it's like, well, I only get to watch you for a week and see what's happening, which is just not long enough because it usually takes about a month to figure out like what you're actually eating. And then I think I might've mentioned this before, but, um, the dietitian Robert Santana, and he's the owner of a, oh, I forget the name of that gym, but, um, he doesn't even have people send their tracking app screenshots. He had, he has them sent their, um, he has them send pictures of what they eat because he's like, people just lie or they don't, you know, they leave stuff out or they, they get the portion all wrong, the serving size all wrong. So, um, I want anyway. to play Roblox. Okay. So, uh, go play, go play. No, I don't want to be alone <sighs> when you're done. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this short. Um, I know I usually talk for longer, but what I have. Uh, this is Clementine, by the way. Um, oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, I'm going to cut this short here and say that, you know, the short answer is you probably, you if you're new and if you're uh, fat, then, yeah, you can, um, then you can probably fast and lift at the same time as long as you are not fasting too long. And I would also add that you have to keep your protein way, way up. Um, I'm new to streaming on Twitch. I'm not new to streaming. Thank you. Uh, and welcome, um, whoever you are. Um, so I would say uh, it's extremely important to keep your protein up when you do eat, like, to, especially if you're fasting at all, your protein needs to be just ridiculous. Like, I think that my protein goal is like 215 because I'm, I'm alternate day fasting. So I, I'm not eating today. Um, tomorrow I'm going to eat like 2,500 calories and, um, and my carbs will be up because I'm not really doing a carb right now. I want insulin signaling as I've talked about. And, uh, I want my metabolism, uh, sped up and carbs will do that. Um, they also increase appetite and blah, blah, blah. So if you are a 350 pound person and you're trying to lose a whole bunch of weight real fast, that's why we don't, that's why we pull carbs for you, um, for a variety of reasons, not the least of which is we want to control your appetite and pulling carbs and getting into ketosis will do that probably better than anything that I know of besides drugs. Maybe, I don't know. I've never really done the drugs thing for, well, at least not for weight loss. <laughs> um, Okay. So anyway, uh, sorry that this was, uh, disjointed and I was distracted, but you know, um, I got a kid all the time. She's just, she's just there being a kid. I love her, but, uh, and we have dance class in a minute. She has dance class. So we're going to go do that. Thank you for watching. I have gymnastics. You don't have gymnastics today. So no, I mean, a little bit. Mm -hmm. So she's four, you know, I mean, what are you going to do? Um, I'm not giving fitness tips so much as I'm talking about fasting and lifting. And I'm about to end this because, uh, life circumstances. If you have suggestions for videos, please comment below. If you have, uh, if you'd like to join my Facebook group, it's Primal Weight Loss. If you'd like to subscribe to me on YouTube, it's Primal Weight Loss. If you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's Fast Carnivore. If you'd like to follow me on Twitch, it's Fast Carnivore. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, it's Carnivore Kristen. If you would like to share your life story with me in private and ask me for lots of advice, uh, depends on my mood, you can email fastcarnivore at gmail.com. If you would like to get exclusive access to stuff and uh send me private messages and get advice <laughs> for free uh you can join my patreon it's primal weight loss <laughs> patreon.com slash primal weight loss and before my kid shows her panties again i'll be signing off bye-bye <laughs> now <laughs>